We love water, water's life. But when it disrupts our everyday technology, water becomes a killer. When the flood comes, there are always malaria around and water for drinking is always dirty. So baby like Britain always feel sick. We always go and live somewhere else because here always is flooded. Water is life. We have to understand that for life to have a future, we've got to take care of the kids. We already lose at least one million children a year to die real illnesses from bad water. Others say, no, 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 it's up to four million, but whatever the number is, it's way too high. With no water, there's no life. With no clean water, again, there's no life because we will be losing a lot of people. The freedom from disease is integrally tied with water. And if you have good water, you have freedom from disease in a disaster setting. During the floods that has been prone to this area, we've experienced many cases of cholera and other waterborne diseases. And this has been due to uh, taking of dirty water. As we address the whole solution of dealing with disasters, number one, it is an item no one wishes to discuss or consider because it's unpleasant and people die. The more recent your experience with dying, the more you're going to listen to a message that says, how can I prevent my family from being a victim? And so what we're talking about on one hand is life, that is a hydration solution to keep their children alive, or death, which occurs when you have the diarrheal illnesses, or the other infections that you get from drinking bad water. And so it really is a basis of life versus death. Okay, I'm the mother, I, I take all the responsibility of the water in the house because it's my duty to wash the clothes, it's my duty to clean my children, to wash them. All things that is concerning with the water in my house, it's my duty. Can we convince the mothers of the world, and this really is a focus on the mothers, they will do everything regardless of culture to protect their family. And if we can convince the mothers this is the way to protect their family, their children, then we will be successful and solutions like the Hydropack will become increasingly important. My dream for the Hydropack is that it be a global tool for early intervention and disaster relief. There is no better tool to use in the early phase of a disaster. It works in any water. It's guaranteed purity, very high acceptance rates, very easy to transport. When water is airlifted, if you airlift Hydropacks instead, the savings in transportation will pay for the product. The Hydropack was developed by a group of engineers at HTI, and that group determined that what they had developed for the military, what they had developed even for NASA, was great, but it was a little on the expensive side. So we focused on being able to make as inexpensive product as possible, and that's where we came up with the Hydropack. We can live for maybe three days without water. Waterborne disease is an acute danger in any disaster. So the Hydropack needs to be pre-positioned and planned as the first in aid in a disaster. Forward osmosis is simple. You start with a semi-permeable membrane. We've been fortunate to have a very good relationship with Eastman Chemical over the years. We use a cellulose material it's called a cellulose triacetate. The beauty of this membrane is twofold. One, it's hydrophilic, and that simply means it loves water. It absorbs water. The second thing that's wonderful about this membrane is that it has great rejection properties. So as a membrane allows water to pass through, all the other contaminants in the water, the viruses, the bacteria, the parasites, those all get blocked. They can't make it through this membrane. The Hydropack works like plants work. All you have to do is put it in water and it does all the rest of the work for you. There's no power needed. It has the capacity to draw water into what we call a draw solution that makes it a great hydration drink. The Hydropack has the sugars that help in the forward osmosis. This is a way in which you ensure that uh, people take water, which is very good for their health, and also in emergency situations, they get the much needed energy that could keep them going so that they can be able to cope up with all other uh, threats that come with emergency situations. Every time that we haul water around the world for disaster response, it means that we're being 20 times less efficient or 20 times more expensive than we could be with a Hydropack answer. A Hydropack literally is 1 20th of the weight and cube of moving water, becomes the most cost-efficient, easiest-to-use system, 
to include that final mile. The final mile is the most difficult part of a disaster scenario. The final mile from your logistics head to get to where things are needed is extremely difficult. And if you're hauling water, you're being inefficient, costing more money than you should. Quaho is looking at hydropack as a technology that would be used where other technologies are not working, particularly where we have outbreaks of diarrhea diseases, either brought about by floods or brought about by drought situations. The Kenya demonstration project is intended to validate and demonstrate the viability of the hydropack as an early intervention tool for disaster relief. There's basically four main components of this pilot project. We have a health research component. We have a daily use survey, which is intended to measure the degree of acceptance and proper use of the hydropack. We have a design research component that Modern Edge is doing to help improve the packaging and the communication portion of the product, which is very critical for proper use in disaster situations. We start with a level of dialogue to become familiar, to be influenced by the people, and then when we create a solution, it's not an impersonal solution, it actually means something to that community. Budalangi area was selected specifically for this product because Kuaho felt that this technology is suited for emergency situations. One of the problems that we face when floods occur in Budalangi area is the provision of safe water. We wanted to know the feeling of the people, how they would receive hydropack. The hydropack has been overwhelmingly accepted in the community. Very high rate of acceptance, very high rate of enthusiasm for the product. It is nice. It tastes like orange. You see, she doesn't want to leave it because it is so nice. It is an appetizer. After having taken one, I saw there was urge to be given more, especially the orange. In a disaster situation, when you're going in and there's no safe water, the solution that you're bringing in needs to have a high acceptance rate or else the disaster victims will drink the contaminated water because it tastes like what they're accustomed to. Any water around me can be used by the hydro packs. I dip the pack in the basin that I used to wash the clothes with because I cared less even if the basin washes clothes. Everybody likes it. The picture on top has even assisted me to illustrate to children because I just tell them, look at where the picture is and ensure the picture is on the top. And the other side is dipped in the water. It's a question of putting in a container. Between 8 and 10 hours, the water is ready for use. So it is actually easier and simpler because it can be used even by my people who have not acquired education. You just put it into the water and you, you give it time. You can do it even overnight. Then it, tomorrow morning you, you use the, the water. We conducted tests where uh, the hydro pack was placed in a contaminated sample. We took the sample and tested and found it had uh, coliforms. When you test uh, the solution of the hydro pack, you find there is no contamination. That shows that uh, the membrane of the hydropark does not allow the contaminants to, to get into the water. You want to provide something that really works. And the, and the only way to get an assessment if there's a real benefit is to let people use it in the setting that they live in. And then to ask them how it worked for you. What, what do you like, what you don't like. And to be able to get their feedback is very valuable to us. We want them to believe that they had input in this that was made to meet their needs. And it's something that's just more than a technology went into, but it's something that a heart went into. Okay.